Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to explain you how to compute exponential moving averages in Python and Pandas. First I'm going to give you a brief theoretical introduction to exponential moving averages, then I'm going to explain the Python codes, and finally I'm going to teach you how to produce this graph, this nice graph that you can see over here. This graph represents the historical prices of the Amazon stock. The blue line is the actual price and the red line is the computed exponential moving average. I have created a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. So if you don't have time to watch this video, you can just follow this link that will be given in the description below and you can read the post. In the sequel, we give a brief theoretical introduction to exponential time series. So in order to motivate the definition of the exponential moving averages, let us first consider an average of time series x of k defined as follows. So what you can see over here is the sum of the first n samples of the time series x of k. Sn is the sum and the index n denotes the averaging index. Now, obviously, we can transform the last equation and we can represent it as the equation 2. And furthermore, we can derive this equation, the equation 3. So why this equation is important? Well, we are able to represent the average of n samples as some constant multiplying the average of n minus 1 samples plus the xnth sample divided by n. Next, from the equation 3, we can obtain the equation 4 by simply rewriting this first term. So this first term can be written as 1 minus 1 over n. And the last equation can be written compactly as follows where beta is 1 over n. Now, the previous derivation is very instructive since, as you will see in the sequel, the equation 6 represents a special form of the exponential moving average. Now, formally speaking, the exponential moving average of the time series x of k is defined as follows. How do we define it? We initialize the exponential moving averages with time series at the time instant 0. Now, for k larger than 0, the exponential moving averages are simply computed as alpha times xk plus 1 minus alpha multiplying the exponential moving average at the time instant k minus 1. And you can write this equation over here as follows. You can just simply regroup the entries and you will obtain something that looks like this. Now the main question is how to select the parameter alpha. One approach is to try to fit the parameter alpha from the time series data using optimization methods. For more details you can see for example the Wikipedia page. So what do you do? You can form a least squares problem and from this equation you can fit the parameter alpha such that the error between the actual time series and the exponential moving average is minimized. On the other hand, if you select alpha as 1 over n, you will obtain a simple average. That's what we have seen from the previous der derivation. However, one popular choice of alpha is 2 over 1 plus s, where s is a user-selected time span or time window or a period. This choice is actually used in the pandas EWM function that's being used to compute the exponential moving averages. You can also select alpha using some other methods. In the sequel, we explain the Python code for computing the exponential moving averages. First, we are going to import the standard libraries. These are pandas libraries, numpy, the plotting library and the pandas data reader library that's being used to download the data from internet that is to download the stock prices from internet 
Next, we need to define the parameters of the exponential moving averages. We are going to use the selection of alpha that's actually being used in Pandas library. So, to reproduce this selection of alpha, we first define the time period of 30, and we choose alpha as 2 over time period plus 1. The next step is to define the dates for downloading the data. So we are, we are going to look at the histories of stocks starting from 2016 until 2021. This piece of code is used to download the data from the internet and to save it on your local computer. In interest of making this video as short as possible, I'm not going to explain this code. Since I have explained this code in one of my previous videos, I'm going to give you a link in the description below. So if you execute this line of code, this line of code will basically produce a Python data frame called data that will contain historical prices of the Apple stock. You can also change this ticker symbol over here to some other string if you want to download some other stock. For example, if you want to download the Boeing stock, you're going to write here BA because this is a ticker. The, the ticker for Boeing is BA. Now, once you have downloaded or loaded the data from your local computer, you can inspect the data by typing data.head and you will see one, two, three, four, five, six column. And the column we are interested in is the last column and this is the adjusted closing price. So if you want to plot the adjusted closing price, you can execute this line of code and you're going to obtain a time history of the closing price of the Apple stock. If you want to isolate the closing price as Panda series, you can type the code line 66, and if you just evaluate the closing price variable, you'll see that it is a time series. Furthermore, you can extract the values stored in this time series by typing closing price dot values, and this will produce you an array where every entry corresponds to the closing price. Okay, we are now ready to compute the exponential moving averages. Basically, there are two approaches for computing exponential moving averages. The first approach is based on the for loop. So you can manually write a for loop that's going to iterate over the definition of the exponential moving average. That is, it's going to iterate over the equation defining the exponential moving average. And the second approach is based on building pandas functions. So let's first explain the first approach. So for the first approach, you need a list that's called exponential moving average, and this list will store the computed exponential moving averages. And the second variable is called exponential moving average value and is being used to store the temporary value of the exponential moving average. Namely, when you're iterating and recursively computing the exponential moving average using the definition or using the equation defining the exponential moving average, this value or this variable will store the value, the current value, of the exponential moving average. So what do you do? You define a for loop that iterates over the entries in closing price. Then if k is equal to zero, you initialize the recursion with the initial value of the price. If the iteration is larger than zero, then you simply apply the definition of the exponential moving average, the defining equation. And you go over this for loops, just iterates, iterates, iterates until it reaches the end value stored in the closing price. And then at the end of the loop, you're storing the computed value in the exponential moving average list. After we are finished with the computation of the exponential moving average, 
we're going to store the computed values as an extra column inside of the data object that is inside of the data frame object called data and we do that by executing the code line 85 so let us execute our code and let's check our results so if you write data dot head we can observe the last column and the last column contains the exponential moving averages we can also plot the results great here are the results the blue line represents the actual price and the smoother line that's denoted by color red is the exponential moving average next we explain the method for computing the exponential moving averages using the built-in pandas functions and at the end we are going to compare two approaches for computing the exponential moving averages so in order to compute the exponential moving averages using the pandas functions we are simply going to isolate the adjusted closing price and then we are going to call the method ewn with the parameters span is equal to time period and with this parameter adjust is equal to false and on top of that you're going to call the mean function now this function itself selects alpha as 2 over 1 plus time period but we just need to specify the time period and let us execute this line of code good now the final step is to compare the results so what we are comparing we are comparing the exponential moving averages computed using the for loop and using the built-in pandas functions and the results should be identical so let us compare the results we are going to compare them graphically by simply executing these code lines so what you can see over here the red line corresponds the corresponds to manually computed exponential moving average using the for loop and the black line corresponds to the pandas function ewn we can see that the results are identical okay that would be all for today i hope that you enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe or support my channel thank you very much and have a nice day